from attacks, scams, and breaches. If you spend money on one security effort this year, consider investing in your people. At 7-Minute Security, we're excited to offer Light Pen Test Light. That stands for Live Interactive Training Experience. This three-day remote course is a 100% hands-on instructor-led program that introduces you to a virtual company we call Pwntown. Then you put on your black hat, and together we will scan, attack, and eventually completely compromise Pwntown's Active Directory environment. This is not a webinar or a lecture. This is real, hands-to-keyboard experience led by our experts at 7-Minute Security. Whether you're a blue teamer, a developer, or even a hobbyist who wants to build some pen testing chops, this course identifies the vulnerabilities we see over and over on our assessments and gives you scenario-based experience to find them and exploit them. Each day is a three and a half hour session. On day one, we give you a tour of Pwntown and work through a bag of tricks that hackers use to find easy wins on your network. We'll explore a nickel tour of Active Directory and why it is so ripe for abuse, curb roasting and AS rep roasting attacks, how to crack password hashes, and how to break through a network's first defenses to become a local system administrator. On day two, it's time to up the ante. We will learn how to snipe passwords with the MS14025 vulnerability, enumerate Active Directory attack paths, abuse network protocols, and exploit group policy objects that have weak passwords and misconfigurations. On day three, we'll bring it all home by dumping domain credentials, setting credential traps for unsuspecting users, scraping system passwords, and impersonating members of the domain admins group. Light Pen Test Light is more than instruction. It's also a classroom community. At the end of each session, you're free to practice what you've learned in the lab and chat with other students about their approaches and backgrounds. Our sandbox approach to security training doesn't require a heavy lift from your on-site IT or security team. Everything's done remotely and at a price that's affordable for small and medium-sized businesses. Want to learn more? Head over to 7minsec.com training to find out when the next session starts, pricing information, and much more. You know security is hard, so let's assume We're probably gonna get owned by noon But if we all start to get the basics right We might not fully get owned until tonight Hey, there we go. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Lovely to uh, virtually hang out with you. And I'm just going to sanity check on my own that things are streaming to the places and it looks like they are. And I'm not going to do an audio check this time. I'm going to just assume, which is always a bad idea, that uh, somebody will scream in the chat if you can't hear uh, stuff. But uh, really appreciate you um, joining us for for a part two. Oh, let me get let me be like an official, uh, you know, YouTube person. Part two of a series we talked about a couple of weeks ago uh, called How to Build a Vulnerable Pen Test Lab, uh, part one. And uh, I'm really, uh, that, that's gotten a lot of, lot of good feedback. I, I've so been in this mode uh, lately because we, um, we gave our light pen test training course uh, last week. And uh, as, as hard as sometimes this can be to sort of build it on your own, because I've been focusing on the Let's make the sausage ourselves, right? So in part one, we kind of spun up a domain controller and I started showing you how to put some vulnerabilities into this thing. Um, so it, it, you know, it can be kind of a pain to do it this way. Um, I'll, I'll review a little bit more about what we talked about uh, in part one. But um, this, this has been so on my mind, especially because um, I have all these ideas for, for new things I want to bake into the lab. But, uh, but today we're going to continue that uh, train of thought. I'm going to show you some more ways and i think they're all pretty easy that you can uh, you know make your pen test lab have an active directory environment that 
looks and smells a little bit more real. And then we can start kind of sprinkling in common things that we find on, on uh, pen tests all the time. Um, I, um, hold on a second. I got two, two comments here. Uh, let me see. Kevin says, could not figure out how to install that tool from the last video found the GitHub page, but had no idea how to unzip the entire file. Kevin, I'll, I'll try to revisit that later. Maybe you can be a little bit more specific. Um, and maybe we can just quick touch on that live here. Um, and then somebody asks, why are you dressed like the guy from Watch Dogs? Uh, I don't, I don't know what that is. Am I dressed like the guy from Watch Dogs? What is that? Uh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Now I'm curious. Uh, I was going to get to the, the PowerPoint outline, but now, now I can't, uh, do that because, oh, whoops, what's going on here? Oh, okay. I just had to get out of it. Um, sorry. It's just, I, I, I don't have ADHD, but sometimes I think I do. And um, what, what is Watch Dogs? Is that that movie with uh, Jonah Hill or something? Watch Dogs? What's that? Um, oh, is, oh, is it this? <laughs> is, is it this guy? I assume that's what Akutastic means. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess I am. Maybe I'm not doing it right. Maybe is it just to get the full... Is it is it this now? <laughs> Am I Mr. Watchdog or whatever this guy's name is? Um, okay, uh, I Aku Tastic. Um, I'm uh, I didn't do that intentionally, but um, but now I find it absolutely hilarious. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, I don't. You know, I barely listen. I'm so out of it right now. Um, I was up. I did kind of a, a very late hackathon yesterday, starting early in the afternoon and going all the way till 1.30 a.m. Um, it ended in a domain admin dance, but boy, I'm paying for it today, friends. Um, I don't have the stamina to just like, oh, I just need like four hours of sleep a week, uh, like I did when I was in, in my 20s. Like I am, I'm feeling it, but it kind of gives me like this feeling of, hey, I'm just hanging out with my friends now. So now I don't have to be like all in the 7MS shirt and like, Hello, let me be, let me be all professional. Um, but all that to say, um, I definitely don't dress um, well at all. So um, that was not intentional, but boy, maybe this will just be, maybe I'll be that guy on YouTube, right? Like I just dress, uh, dress in themes. Um, okay. <laughs> all right. Um, so uh, just, just a couple of shameless self promotions. Uh, we got the ebook you can check out ebook.7minsec.com. It's $7.77 and it covers a lot of the things uh, kind of that we're doing here. It doesn't get into pen test lab building per se, but um, it goes into attacking a lot of the vulnerabilities we are going to bake in to our lab. So check that out. Um, and then uh, of course, just wanted to plug again, the live URL. Uh, I, I just mentioned it every time uh, just so that you know what's, what's happening. But every Thursday at 1 p.m., we do something security flavored. And uh, coming up next week, uh, I'm going to do a Tales of Pentest Ponage um, because the late night hackathon last night, followed by some discoveries on a different pen test a few days earlier, uh, led me to two very similar um, paths to compromise that I had never seen before. And it was just funny timing that then I have like two within a week. Um, and to kind of tease it up for you a little bit, it all stemmed back to um, a domain controller config that I think at this point, I'm still getting the research in on it because I'd never seen it before, but I think it's just a legacy artifact from domains that have been upgraded over and over and over again over the years. Um, but that little legacy artifact can end very quickly in full uh, domain compromise with very little, very few to no alerts being generated. So I'm excited to share that with, with you. So that's coming up next week at, at this time. Okay. Um, so I'm going to pop into the lab real quick here and, uh, and we will um, just do a quick review of had bath part one, which is how to build a vulnerable pen test lab part one, just touch really quick on what we covered. So if you're like, I'm lost, how did we get here? I'll give you those high, high points. Um, then we're going to, we're going to fill this domain full of just like garbage, uh, users. I mean, real looking users, we're going to put some properties into their different, uh, user fields. 
but um, it's kind of fun to be able to just, you know, rather than right click new, you know, first name, Joe, last name test. And then you set a password and all that stuff. Oh, we can do it very quickly and at huge scale um, using um, some cool uh, Python tools that are easy to use. Um, and then we'll, we'll create a couple roastable users. These are users that um, are configured in such a way that it's very easy to ask Active Directory directly. And well, ask Active Directory directly. Could we have usernames and hashes of uh, those affected users? We pull them down. Uh, sometimes we can crack those and have Insta domain admin and, you know, do the domain admin dance or, um, or do something like this. Giggity, 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 giggity. Yeah. Um, and then we'll take a little commercial break. And then um, with kind of the setting the stage um, with these vulnerabilities, we're going to bake in, then we'll, uh, we'll poke at them. We'll look at them from the um, offensive side and, and how we can take advantage of them as testers. Um, all right. So let's, um, let's get to it. Um, I always have a reminder slide to myself of when it's time to uh, jump off into the lab. And uh, Kevin, I did see your question. Maybe remind me at the end if we still have time. Um, otherwise, you're welcome to um, you, to reach out to me directly. I can help you with uh, GP3 Finder. Okay, if I don't, um, if we don't have any extra time here, I always, every single time I do this, I feel like, oh, I've got like two things I want to show these folks, and then pretty soon it's like I'm racing the last few minutes to get it buttoned up and and get you out of here. Um, well, what you're seeing right now is the domain controller that we be, we built together. Please just be, please just be patient. Words are are not really working for me. This is the domain controller we built together in part one of this series. Okay, so um, essentially just downloaded the ISO from Microsoft, uh, did a vanilla install of server whatever we are, um, 2019, I think. Yeah, here we go. Winver, Winver doesn't work in the menu, but if you do this, it will. Yeah, server 2019. And uh, we went through, and if anybody needs this, let's see, do I still have my notes from last week? I do. If anybody needs this like via email or something, let me know. But but we did a, a just a couple really basic uh, changes to change the local admin password, install Active Directory tools, and actually install the uh, the domain itself. So what I've got here is a little a little domain environment called bryfly.us and if you're like wait a minute brian is that oh except now it now it's not going to re resolve probably or maybe it will no there we go it's trying to resolve locally but it will it will resolve externally for you to a bunch of indoor skydiving videos don't even send me a thank you you're welcome um and so we uh so we, so we got this environment all set up and then let me see my notes here um, and then one of the things we did is we came in, let me go to group policy management. Uh, one of the things we did is we intentionally gave um, a not so hot password policy. So very relaxed requirements. Uh, I know it's going to be small on your screen, but we had minimum uh, password length of six characters and complexity disabled. So that allowed us... Um, that will allow us to set up some test users with passwords like the word password. And I, I said it during part one, but I'll say it again. If you're like, wait a minute, Brian, you're relaxing these password requirements just to make things more fun and entertaining. Certainly you don't see this on real pen tests, do you? Yes, we do. And I'm not talking down to any of those organizations we found that on. I'm just saying, even though we're, we're relaxing the requirements, we de definitely see that in the wild. Um, and then what we did, and this is maybe too much to repeat um, quickly, but we created um, a, uh, or I showed you how to create a group policy object that um, pushed out a global local admin. I guess it is still here. Um, and we talked about this vulnerability called the MS14025 that back in the day, it would allow you to... Um, push out a user called global local admin and set a password of whatever password you want. Um, the problem there is that Microsoft whoopsie daisy at some point offered up the encryption key and it's the same for every domain in the world. So if you come across these encrypted C password values in your travels, um, any number of tools will find them and will, uh, 
I was just going to see. Oh, I do. I do have my pin castle report. I can just show you a super quick. Let's see. Is it this one? Uh, no. Whoops. That's the help. That's the help thingy. Let me go over here uh, to. Uh, oh, that one. But of course, for some reason, it doesn't think. It doesn't think Chrome is the thing. To open and let me go to well where you end up finding this is under the anomalies section so i just want to point that out okay here we go number of passwords found in gpo1 we click on it and pincastle is polite enough to find the affected gpo find the login and also decrypt the encrypted password so this is super cool when you find this on a pen test you may in fact be able to turn right around uh you know, use something like crack map exec, sweep whole subnets, right? And you might have insta local admin to flip in everything. Okay. So, um, so today what we're going to do, let's start by uh, filling this active directory with some more users. Okay. Cause just out of the box here, there's, uh, you know, there, there's not a lot, there's, there's not a lot. Uh, in fact, if we go into users here, We'll find, you know, this is, I, in fact, I don't think I added anybody except, you know, just the out-of-box administrator. So there's nothing here. It's a little bit more fun if you've got, you know, a whole bunch of fake employees in here. And then we, once we have those imported, we can like put in values inside their description field and that kind of stuff, like you might see in the real world pen testing. Like you might come across a description and the description says, we changed Bob's password on February 2nd to, you know, security is cool. Um, we find that kind of stuff all, all the time. Um, I've got, if you want, um, just a real basic um, set of users um, on, on this, this B Patty Rocks documentation project of mine, which um, unfortunately I'm incredibly, incredibly late in updating. Uh, but if you go under pen testing how to's and you go to lab setup, um, here's a simple CSV full of users and then an, and then an import script. But it is it is a little bit just kind of hokey because you've you've got to do some work on your own. Um, you've got to you've got to edit this. And th this was from an old test domain of mine called uh, I got worms, um, which if you know what that's from, we're best friends. OK. Um, but I got worms was a, well, I'll just tell you, it was a dumb and dumber themed, um, presentation that I was working on. So all my test users were, I got worms. So if you're going to use something like this, you're going to have to do a little bit of, you know, find and replace, right? You're going to have to go, I got worms, um, uh, replace it with, you know, your dot domain, whatever your, whatever you named your active directory environment, right? So I've replaced it there. And then you've also got to go into the uh, PowerShell import script that I have for you. And you got to just, I mean, I mean, it's nothing like incredibly intensive, but it, but it is a couple extra steps, right? You got to find the domain here uh, and you got to change that. Okay. So in preparation for this, I just got looking around the internet and I was like, all right, well, where, where are there some better ways to, um, to do this? And I found this cool tool. And I'll try to uh, paste links as I go through them. This one's called U U User User Fake User Generator for Active Directory. So let me just try to paste this in here. Oh, let me see if I missed some stuff. Um, okay, seems like people appreciated that I look like the guy from Watchdogs unintentionally. Uh, somebody here is offering me promotion for my channel. Great. Um, yeah. And Tim, Tim said you would like the notes. Yeah. Will you just reach out to me, Tim, on what, if, if we're connected through, um, yeah, LinkedIn or just, uh, seven has a contact field. I'll definitely get it to you. And, uh, Nate says it's not a seven MS presentation without a dumb and dumber reference. And that is true, Nate. And we'll see if I can't work in a Tommy boy reference by the time we're done. Okay. So, so user, let me get into my, um, Cali box, just because I'm a little bit more comfortable uh, working in there. This is really, this is really slick. Um, they, they've got a, a, you know, nice install document. They've got a whole bunch of examples for you to follow. And they've even got a YouTube video. So I'm, I'm not going to spend a, uh, a ton of time going through it. I'm just going to give you 
one uh, one syntax example that you could easily follow um, to uh, to get some users generated. So let me see if my copy paste works. There we go. Okay, so so what I did, and I, I did this ahead of time, but I called user and called the generate function. And then this uh, next part, generate length is how long do you want the passwords to be? So if you're gonna do something like later on in your environment, um, like um, practice dumping all the hashes out of Active Directory and then um, cracking them, you know, that's kind of fun. Um, maybe you make this length just whatever your minimum allowed password length is. So what do, what do we say for ours again? I think we said six, right? Excuse me, six, okay. And, and then you've got to point it to an OU. So just to kind of keep things simple, um, I'm just going to dump them all. I, I'm going to make that right here. So I'm, I'm in the Active Directory Users Computers tool. I'm going to go New Organizational Unit. Let's call it Contractors. Okay, it's empty right now. I, I think in testing this tool, I think this OU has to exist. I don't think it will create it for you. Um, okay, it's the OU of contractors. My domain is bryfly.us. Great. My domain is bryfly.us. And then here's where you can generate, um, uh, pick, pick the number of users that you want to generate. Um, I'm going to do 7,777. And output, um, I think I've created this before. I'm going to call this 7777 losers.csv and let's see how she runs I think I missed something uh, here's the thing folks um, give you again this advice is free too I'm not gonna like send you guys any sort of uh, you know PayPal pay site um, you want to be in the folder where tools are if you're gonna call them in the current directory like I did so let's try again there we go so this is cool because um, it writes out a CSV full of your 7777 losers and then a PowerShell import script to go along with it. So I should, in theory, demo gods be blessing me now, I should be able to pull the CSV and the PS1 over to the domain controller. Um, I think just get them both in the same folder and then fire the, fire the PS1. And then I will say, Giggity. you know, so here's what I'm going to do. This is a, uh, if you've not done this before, this is so handy. I can't tell you how many times I use this on a pen test um, is um, just m make this system a, um, a little uh, web server to serve files in whatever directory I'm in. So you can go um, Python three, I think it's back M for mode or module HTTP server. And then the port. I think if you just leave it straight up, yeah, it, it defaults to 8,000, which actually I kind of like because then that would maybe be a little bit more stealthy in case the organization you're testing is like scanning for that kind of stuff or something. But I want to make it easy on myself, so I'm going to do server space 80. Okay, so it's up. Should be able to just go right to its IP. And there we go. So let me pull both these guys down to desktop, ploink, and take the CSV, ploink. And if I go back here now, one of these things, okay, not you, but you, uh, then we see the source IP and what they grab. So that's kind of cool too. You get, you get a little bit of a, you know, web activity log. All right, swell. Um, let's take a look. I'm going to open up the old PowerShell ISC. Let's see if this cooperates with us. So let's open up 777 losers. Let me zoom in a little bit. See, is this nice? Just writes the PowerShell for you. Uh, I don't know a lot of things, uh, PowerShell being one of them, but I, I get the gist here. All I need to do is feed it the CSV and, uh, hopefully it'll take care of the rest. Let's see, is my OU name in there? Yeah, I think that's called through a variable. Okay. Um, all right, Beyblades, Beyblades, let's let it rip. And uh, probably a couple problems here. Um, 
probably a couple things here. Not in the right folder and set execution policy to bypass. I think that might help. Huang. Oh, yeah. We come over here and refresh. Oh, it's giggity time. If it didn't go well, I would say giggity, you know. But there we go. We're getting a, a contractor. Our contractor's OU is filling up with people. Um, okay, so we're going to come back a little bit later. We're going to put in some vulnerable descriptions for folks so that we as pen testers can uh, come back and, and see it, see what that looks like from an attacker's perspective. But while that's, um, let me think, while that's baking, um, I want to, uh, let me think. Let me do this. I, I need to get, uh, I need to get Rubius downloaded um, so we can do the, uh, we're going to set up a user as being Kerber roastable. We're going to set up another as being AS rep roastable. And then we're going to use Rubius to roast their hashes, so to speak, and pull those down. So I'm going to use, uh, I think we've talked about this before. I've certainly mentioned it a bunch in the, in the podcast, but um, I'm going to make things kind of easy on myself and download Sharp Collection. Um, so this is a, um, this repository, it goes out, I think every night, grabs a whole bunch of popular offsec tools and builds them into EXEs for you. And I won't revisit the whole conversation. I know this makes some people's uh, bum holes kind of go like that. Um, but I have, I personally have chosen to trust this researcher and this pipeline uh, to build EXEs so that I don't have to because I'm not good with Visual Studio. Um, however, as you might imagine, uh, Windows Defender is going to absolutely uh, take a deuce in its drawers if we don't um, either just shut it off or kind of what I like to do. It seems like no matter how many times I tell Defender to just stop actively protecting, it is just like, hi, I just decided to turn it on and, and gobble, you know, folders full of stuff that I've been working on. So I kind of like to go down here to exclusions and then just sit up, uh, set up an area where I can download Sharp Collection and other stuff. So this is going to be called, it's not aware. Okay. So now, hopefully, uh, Defender will just ignore this, leave us alone, let us let us download you know bad things to it. Um, oh, okay, and that's going to go right to the down downloads folder and freak out Defender. So how about I try save link as? There we go. Okay, that's kind of a big download. We'll let we'll let that get going for a moment. And um, okay, I know we've probably still got users importing. Let's see here. Yeah, they're still flying in. But uh, let me show you. Uh, let's make, let's make a user. This is really easy. Let's make a user that is AS rep roastable. And while we're doing this, I'm going to plop. I'm going to plop the link. Is that it? I'm going to plop a link there that I like for just a, Hey, you kind of want, want a quick skinny description on uh, AS rep roasting. I think this net net Rick's article does a pretty good job. Um, so it says, when pre-authentication is, is enabled, a user who needs access to a resource begins the Kerberos authentication process. And, and, and they describe that process. And then here's the problem. Um, if pre-authentication is disabled, then an attacker could request authentication data for that user and get enough uh, key material to have a hash that could be brought offline you could potentially crack that user. It could be domain admin if we're really lucky, right? And then um, it, it could be very a very quick path to, to domain admin. Um, bottom line is to make a user susceptible to this AS rep roasting, um, it's very simple. Now let's pick, let's see if we got any, um, let's see if we got any bobs in here. Let's make a bob. Oh, come on. Um, how about, is there a Sally? Sally Mills. Let's see. I thought I saw one of these generator things. It was like all celebrity names, um, but let's use, oh, Sally Smith. Perfect. Okay. So here's all you got to do to make Sally Smith susceptible to the AS rep roasting attack. We're just going to go to Sally's account tab. 
we're going to go down here and we're going to tick this box. Do not require Kerberos pre-authentication. Okay, we're going to say, okie doke. And uh, I'm just gonna, I'm going to leave that for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to finish setting up a Kerberosable user, okay, and then um, and then we'll have like a little break. Then we'll come back and look at all this from like an offensive standpoint. But while we're at it, let's do one more. Um, now that we've got some users in here, let's see. Um, do we have Tommy in here at all? As in Tommy Boy, right, Nate? Right? We don't have any Tommies. Shoot. How about do we got any Richards? Richard. There we go. We got June Richards. We got, let's see, what's a good, what's a good Richard names? How about Tony Richards? Okay, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to put in, in Tony's description field, I'm going to put in something that we pretty often see on pen tests. I'm going to say like, um, you know, problem with account on 2223, change password to, you know, uh, uh, Tony want wingy. Okay, that'll co that'll come import uh, become important in a, in a little minute or two after the break. All right, so we've got a AS rep roastable user configured, and we've got a user with a um, sensitive description field that we would want to be able to easily find as a pen tester. Um, so let's do let's do one more user config. Um, let's make our Let's make our Kerber roastable user. And here's the article I will send you on that, that I think does a pretty nice job of just, just giving you the skinny on, on Kerber roasting and, and what it's all about. Um, so let's see, what do they have? Okay, an attacker who has uh, already compromised the account of a domain user. That's important for both these AS rep roasting and curb roasting attacks, you just need any valid uh, Active Directory user. You don't need a user with any sort of special permissions, you know, no domain admin, nothing like that. Um, but here we go. In such an attack, an adversary masquerading as an account user with a service principal name requests a ticket, which contains an encrypted password or Kerberos. Okay. And they talk about what SPN attributes are. So um, I mentioned this before, but when we're in, you know, meetings with, executives and they're just like curb roasting that's in the description what the deuce does it mean we just talk about well you know the way this account or these accounts are configured um if we have any valid user cred we can just request uh th those usernames and a potentially crackable hash and if those accounts are high privileged and running important services and such um we can often quietly crack them offline uh, come back, know their plain text password, and then go after, um, you know, we might be instantly high privileged or at least be well on our way towards um, privilege escalation. So um, so check out that article for more of the, you know, in the weeds curb, uh, you know, authentication and, and ticket shenanigan fun. Um, but to, uh, let's see if I've got this one. Oh, shoot. I had um, curb roastable user lab. I had one other link that was, um, let me just check these two real quick. There was one of these that I followed. Um, oh, it might be this one. Let me see. SPN. Yes, yes, yes. Let me give you this one too. If you want more of a, how do I apply this and play around with this in my own home lab? That's a good link. Um, but what I've got here, if I can find it is just a little, just a little PowerShell snippet bring this up in a new window that um, makes a curb roastable user. And again, if you want <clears throat> these little text snippets, um, just, just reach out to me um, either on our, well, if, if we're not connected in any other, you know, social way, uh, sevenminsec.com, there's a contact field and, you know, just shoot me a, a form there and I'll, I'll get all this to you. Um, but just in the interest of time, I'm trying to kind of click through things. Um, but here's a little PowerShell snippet that creates a new user called Kerba, uh, first name Kerba, last name Roastable, and then um, fills in some of the user properties, right? First name, last name, what the account name will be, uh, what the description field will say, uh, where that user is going to live. So I've just been throwing everybody in contractors, so I'm going to stick with that. And then um, 
a couple parameters here to create a nice strong password of password one. You know, it's kind of fun to set this as an easily crackable password so that when we come back later and, and dump out this uh, hash or you're, you're playing with this in your lab, you can actually in a reasonable amount of time, you know, crack that password and sort of get that, that satisfaction. Um, so, so that's all this is. This is just a one-liner to create Kerba. Okay. And, uh, and then the second line, all that does is just turn the account on because I think it's the case that if you create a new user in PowerShell, I want to say it's disabled by default. Maybe that's changed, but whatever. Old habits or old scripts die hard. So all this does is turn that account on. And then this, this SP, the set SPN or set service principal name um, creates, uh, assigns Kerba um, to a, a fake service just called IIS site um, and, and against this host, the domain controller, which is, is all I have here right now. Um, if it was a little bigger lab, I'd probably specify, you know, um, I'd make a system called Apple one or SQL one where we, t where we usually see this, th these vulnerable accounts. But for now I've got an extremely small environment. So just, just assigning it here on the DC is fine. Um, so we'll see if I actually have decent luck. I don't, I don't think I left anything out. So let me see. Well, there's one way to find out, right? Press play. Okay, yeah, I, I think that actually worked. There's our friend Kerba, got created. We registered a service principal name for Kerba Roastable. Well, we'll, we'll find out very shortly. Uh, we'll take a break in just a sec. We'll then come back in. We're going to use a tool called Rubius to see if we can see if we've properly configured our AS rep Roastable user and uh, Kerba here, who's our uh, Kerba Roastable user. Um, oh, and also... Uh, here's a nice little snippet. If you just want to check your work to see if that SPN registered correctly, uh, someone had sent me this, which is kind of nice. I think this I think this command queries for all SPNs and then filters out with find str, which I think is find string. Um, I'm just looking for uh, a string that I know is in my SPN, right? So here's IIS. Remember up here, uh, I have IIS site in the name. So as long as I didn't fat finger the context, I think this will return. Yes, there it is. There's my IIS site. So I, th I think we're golden. I think we're golden right now. So let me just check my notes and make sure I didn't miss anything. I don't think I did. Um, let me just take a quick break. Let's hear a word from our sponsor. I'll catch up on uh, chat messages and uh, we'll be back to you in, in just a couple of minutes, okay? All right, I'll be right back. Today's episode of the 7-Minute Security Podcast is brought to us by SafePass.me. SafePass.me is the most efficient and cost-effective solution to prevent Active Directory users from setting a weak or compromised password. It's in compliance with the latest NIST password guidelines, and it's the only enterprise solution to protect organizations against credential stuffing and password spraying attacks. And boy, do we love safepass.me. It's super easy to use. You just download this MSI file to your domain controllers. You run it, you reboot the domain controllers, and boom, just like that, you will be actively preventing your users from picking millions and millions of known, weak, leaked, breached passwords. Uh, it really is that easy. And I think one of my favorite parts is that safepass.me includes a custom word list that you can use as well. So if you don't want people to be able to pick company name 2022, company name 2023, you can do that with the built-in safepass.me word list. Um, but beyond that, that's about how quick you can get it up and running. So next time Active Directory users get prompted to change a password, they type in the new password they wanna use, and if it's on the block list, boom, they'll be told they have to pick something else. Uh, it's really awesome. We invite you to check out more at safepass.me. And don't forget to tell them that 7-Minute Security sent you, and you'll get a 10% discount. Again, that is safepass.me. Okay. Welcome back. So, quick review. We imported just a load of users. 
Uh, we set one of them up with a description field with the word password in it, which is definitely something we check for on assessments. And then we reconfigured a couple users to be AS rep roastable and curb roastable. Uh, um, and so now, now we're, we're going to go after and see what those things look like from the, the offensive standpoint. Okay. Um, we've talked a lot. Oh man, probably every episode at some point I mentioned, um, bloodhound and sharp hound as being like a great way to, um, pull down the raw data within active directory and then kind of map it out visually for yourself. Um, but when I'm looking for just kind of quick and dirty, uh, wins, um, a, a tool that I've used quite a bit in the past uh, is called AD Collector, and uh, I just need to remember. Oh, that's right. We made the uh, we made the totes not malware okay folder. Okay, so in the um, oh, let's look at this uh, not extracted uh, in Sharp Collection, you will find this uh, AD Collector tool uh, amongst many other tools. But it is um, it, it's something we use we use in our our training, and I. I one of the reasons is, is it's simplicity. Um, I really like when you can just run an EXE with no flags and not have to read the readme and just have a bunch of useful information uh, come out. So I'm going to find it in the sharp collection. Uh, okay, sharp, sharp collection, got it. And it's buried. Uh, I'm going to do the 4.7 any folder. Let's see if I can get myself a little bit more real estate. Uh, but if we type AD collector, no special flags, no nothing to learn, just blam, just run it. Um, and this, you know, quickly tweezes out a bunch of information that I uh, probably care about. Um, but let me go up to, as, as it relates to, to finding users in AD who might have sensitive information in their description field. If we look, well, no, my goodness, I have too many users. Uh, I'm trying to think where they're listing here. Oh, it even, it even scrolled off the screen. So here's what we can do in that case. Um, I've done this in the past too. Run AD collector and then do the, uh, is, that, is that greater than? I didn't do good in math. Do, do, do alligator mouth open to the left, ad.txt or whatever you want to call it. Right, just pipe all that output out to a, a file. And now we can look at it a little bit easier. Um, th th this doesn't look quite as cool without the matrix green and black thing going on or whatever you know council you have happening. But you know it'll tell you about your domain. Uh, it'll tell you if there's any trusts. It'll talk about the domain attributes. Um, and I'm going to do, I, I know where this is. I'm just going to search for the word description because yeah, here we go. Can I blow this up a little bit? D -d -d -d. Okay, this is kind of cool. So it's got a specific field here for interesting descriptions. And by default, it'll um, search for the, the string pass anywhere in a description field. Um, I don't remember the syntax off the top, but um, somebody who went through our class, I think it was our buddy Ken, figured out you can feed AD collector like a different flag and have it search for other things. So on a pen test, commonly I will see pass, Password, password colon, um, PW colon. That's another. That's another one. Um, but anyway, this one, this one, sifted through all the users, looked through all the description fields, and it pointed out that our good buddy Tony Richards, right there uh, in their description field, uh, had the password changed to um, Tony want <laughs> uh, Tony want wingy. Um, oh, um, bum bum bum. Let's see. A little bit of a tangent, but but totally related to this. Um, maybe I can show this in more detail in a part three, if we do one of those. Um, there is, oh shoot, what is it? Um, LDAP dump, Cali, what's it called? LDAP domain dump, yeah, that's the one. Um, I found a couple weeks ago on a pen test. Um, yeah, I'll show this next time, I'm sorry. I don't know the syntax, I don't know it by heart to show it to you right now, but this one will dump out also very verbose domain data, and it'll plop it into a bunch of um, JSON and HTML files. And I did, like in Linux, I did something, let's see, am I still connected? I, I did something like grep for the string, um, pass in 
there's like a users.json or something that this spits out. And I found a bunch of matches and uh, I'm not good at reading JSON. So it took me a while to figure out where this stuff was at, but where it was, um, if I look at, um, you know, anybody here, it was all under, um, I think it was here. I think it was the telephones notes thing. And it was like, you know, local admin account on system is, you know, 7ms is neat and has tangents. I mean, it was like, it, it looked like somebody's copy and paste of a very sensitive OneNote or like last pass, you know, document. Um, and, and I would not have found it um, because typically I'm just looking for that. Um, I'm just looking for that description field. So, so, you know, th that's just something to keep in mind. You just never know where passwords are going to pop up. I think I've seen them, you know, in the past, I I've seen them in this field <laughs> in mobile numbers, but now, um, I just, it seems like with every pen test, I just keep broadening the search broad, 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 because yeah, you just, you just don't know when, when passwords are going to uh, pop up. So that's, uh, again, that's AD collector that comes as a part of the, um, sharp collection download. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're more talking about building the vulnerabilities, so I won't go through all this, but, but, but this will point out, um, interesting things. In fact, I think it'll, uh, post what picks up, um, well, there's Kerba roastable. Is that Okay, user accounts with an SPN set. So this does actually flag our um, Kerba account. Um, accounts with no password. Oh, that must be um, with no password. Oh, I might, maybe, I, maybe I fat fingered something when I made all those users, but we got a bunch of users here with no password. It'll tell you things like users that never expire. And sometimes you can look at those and go, whoa, there's a domain admin here that was created eight years ago, never changed its password. I maybe have a decent shot of password spraying it with something like season plus year or you know company plus year that kind of stuff. But okay, so that's that. We we've we've figured out uh, using AD Collector where our uh, sensitive user field was um, for the last couple of things here. Oh, let's let's find and pull down the um, hashes for our AS Rep roastable and our Curb roastable user, um, the, assuming they all work work the way they should. Um, and you can you can do curb roasting and AS rep roasting in any number of tools. Uh, my favorite is Rubius, and I think I'm just going to copy Rubius um, just to uh, the desktop because for some reason it is annoying me extremely to have a super long path that's sort of blocking everybody's view. Oh shoot, that's not going to work. <laughs> shoot, <laughs> shoot, that was a bad idea. That was a bad idea because uh, that's not an excluded folder. But how about just give me a little bit more room? Let's just take it into the totes malware. Uh, it's totes, not malware. Let's just go there. Okay. Should be able to run Rubius. Yeah, run Rubius by itself. Oh my gosh. It can do uh, ticket passing. It can do curb roasting. It can do AS rep roasting. I'm like a salesperson for Rubius if it, if it was... If they were selling it, I would buy it and I would sell it to people who were buying it. Um, password spraying, it, it's, I think, an essential tool in any uh, pen testers, pen test tools folder. Um, but we're going to do, uh, we're going to call Rubius. Oops, we're going to get more screen. We're going to call Rubius. We're going to do, um, uh, we're going to call Kerber Roast. And actually, I think that's all we need to call. And I know we've covered this before, but I never uh, want to forget to mention that th there will be a problem here if we get the, you know, if we get the giggities, uh, if we get the giggity D's. No. Okay. Yeah. If we get the giggity, 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 giggity. and um, go, oh, cool. Look, look at this. We got user Kerba. Let's take Kerba's hash and, and let's, let's, uh, you know, paste it over here and in, in a notepad and, and let's crack it. There's going to be problems, right? Because my goodness, we have line breaks and we have little tabby stuff. If we feed this to John the Ripper or or Hashcat, they're gonna go, "What? What do you want? This? What is? What even is this?" So, so 
we need to give Rubius one more flag. Um, and that is uh, slash no wrap, I believe. Yes. And then we can very carefully just kind of copy from upper left to lower right. And, and then we've got, you know, one, one nice hash uh, that should, should just digest nicely into a John the Ripper or hash cat or whatever you're using. Um, so that's pretty cool. So there, there's our curb roastable user. That seems to be working as advertised. Thank you, technical gods, for cooperating. And then we can do uh, the same sort of thing with Arubius uh, AS rep roast. And I think, I'm pretty sure we always want to add no wrap just so we don't get the weird line breaks. I try that. And there we go. There's our friend, Sally Smith. And we can just do the copy, paste it over, bring it over to the high speed hash cracking rig. And off we go. And, um, and I know we've shown some of this before, but I, I, I always forget. Um, can't tell you how many times during a pen test I, I did this, right? Saw the hash. Okay, cool. I'll, uh, I'll come back to that. And then I'm working away, working away. Right. And for, you know, some reason like the, the, uh, the, the terminal ages off and then this is the most I can arrow up. It's like, okay, not, not the end of the world, right? You can always re roast to get that information. But when I always feel like when I'm in an environment where, you know, every little thing is getting alerted on number one, that's cool. But I, I mean, nobody's perfect, but if, if I look like I've run the curb roasting attack four times or 40 times, um, it maybe looks like, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, so you can do, you can do the same command. Oh, let me get through my history here of as for dads. That's half of having, uh, you could do slash out file colon, um, as rep dot txt. And then, uh, it will. On that, with that flag, I guess it doesn't show you the hash live, which is kind of nice. It's sort of a space saver, but it will stick it in a notepad for you. Okay, there you go. And you do the same for the, the curb roast, of course, too, right? Do curb roast. Oh, curb Ker roast. That's a different one. We'll cover that. We'll cover that next time. Curb roast. I need caffeine. I need it now. No wrap. File Kirby. No, how do you spell uh, Kirby from Smash Brothers? There we go. Kirby.txt. There we go. Do, 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 Are any of you Smash Brothers people? And that song got stuck in my head with uh, my boys when they, especially during the pandemic. A lot of, a lot of Super Smash happening in the Johnson household. Um, okay, so I think that's it uh let me just check my notes to make sure there's nothing else and if you have questions or comments or um kevin i don't know if you're still around we could we could uh, we still got eight minutes left we could try to get this uh gp uh three finder going although my wheels turn slow but they do turn and i will probably not remember how i got it installed but um let me just make sure i covered everything there was to cover um we did that we did the 80 collector we did rubius okay that that's all I've got. So if you're like, okay, cool, I got somewhere else to be, go for it. Um, I'll just hang out for a moment, see if anybody wants to comment, question, concern anything, and uh, hope that you will join us again next week at this time um, for uh, Tales of Pen Test Ponage with some some fun fun stuff. It you know it's weird, right? How like it, you know. You learn one rare new thing and then it's like seeing it in a couple environments or, you know, two or three environments. Um, okay. Well, let's see, Kevin, I don't know if you're around, but Hey, I've still got, I've got seven minutes left. So, uh, Kevin earlier had said, could not figure out how to install that last tool from the video. Okay. So that was, um, that, th what that tool was from, or, or what, one of the things it can do is, um, I was talking earlier about that MS1425 vulnerability that uh, that pre that that advisory uh, you could put out you could push out 
accounts, like local admin accounts on systems. And the problem was the, um, in fact, let me see. Oh, I don't know exactly where that, um, I don't know exactly where that XML file live. Was it group? That XML? Um, See if I see if I can find it. But when you create that account with, um, I don't know, Windows. Whoops, shouldn't, shouldn't do this on little sleep. Is that where it is? Where the heck is it? What if I do this? Uh, uh, we have a million. Let's see if I can find it really quick. No. Um, Oh, maybe I reverted and I might have erased it. That's that could be what's going on here. Preferences. Oh, oh, this might be it. This might be it. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, wait. Yes. Okay. This is it. This is what we showed the first time around. Um, so if you take a group policy back in the day, create it to push out an account, for example, called uh, Global L Admin and you assigned a password to it, it gets stored, the information for that account gets stored in this XML file. And here's the crux of the issue. It gets stored, whoops, having a problem with the mouse. Um, information gets stored as a C password value. There it is. But whoopsie doopsie daisy doozles. Uh, the decryption key, key became available. And so now if you ever come across C password values on a pen test, you can just copy it into a tool and have it be decrypted uh, instantly. Um, so one of the things we showed, and I'm pretty sure that was a, uh, what the heck is it called now? GP3 finder, do I have it here? Three, five, uh, Why'd you have to get that stuck in my head? And we did. Um, oh, I'm like a right in the path kind of deal. Um, so, yeah, Kevin, I don't know if you're still if you're still hanging out there. I might have done I might have done the pre-install work before last episode started. Um. So I think what I did was um, follow the README, and I think I either did a virtual environment or I, I probably did, uh, because I really don't care about this box and like how neat it is, um, I did this piece. Um, so I just did sudo python setup.py install. It just goes out, downloads everything it needs, and then uh, I think it just becomes a, you know, a program you can directly call from anywhere, if that if that makes sense. So then, just just to demonstrate it, since we're right here, if I'm in test and I come across said C uh, password value, let me see if I can do this without my magic mouse deciding to try to own me. I hate the magic mouse. Um, to attack capital D and the string. And uh, look at that. It just it gets decrypted on the fly. Indoor skydiving is neat, and you should try it, LOL. It's a great, actually, it's a pretty strong password, and it is life advice that I would give to you if um, you asked for it. Um, and it, I showed this kind of at the beginning, but if you want to make life a little bit easier on yourself, if you run something like PingCastle in the environment you're testing, you're going to, um, PingCastle will go find this for you, do the decryption for you and tuck it away in this nice, neat little HTML file. So that's one of 77 reasons that I love uh, Pincastle. Um, okay, we got a few more minutes. Oh, there were some questions here from Jay. Do you set up remote access to your vulnerable labs through OpenVM or ESXi for testing while you're away? Just interested whether you keep them locally only. Um, yeah, so Jay, on the... Um, just for like this one, this BriFly world and BriFly US, those are just uh, hosted here on Nux, um, really just for me. So I do have a um, uh, do have VPN access to the internal network here while I'm on the road. So if I am going to show somebody something or like teach you a little session, I can get in um, pretty easy. Uh, for the one that is, um, not that you asked this, but for the one that um, students actively train on, 
Uh, that one is built in Azure and, um, which if you ever want to just like sit down to somebody with somebody who's, um, bitter about how clunky Azure is, I'll, I'll sit down with you and just complain if you want a cheese and wine fest from me. Um, but what, uh, what I've done there is kind of got the environment as perfectly vulnerable as I can snapshot it. And then when we have a week of class, um, each student VM, uh, I'm getting in the weeds here, but everything in the lab has a public IP, public static IP. And I set up just an RDP rule to only let that student RDP into their box. Um, and then really, I don't, you know, I, well, I do care if somebody comes in and does something silly and blows up the domain, but you know, it's meant to be beat up. And so when class is over, I shut down the VMs, I take out all the IP rules, and then I just hit the revert button and we're back to, um, you know, we're back to ready for class again. So hopefully that answered your, your question. Um, and I've got, I've got 159. So I just want to thank you again for, for hanging out. Really, really appreciate it. Let me know if you want, you know, any copies of, um, well, the video obviously will be on YouTube, but if you need any of my notes or anything else, uh, just head to sevenminsec.com and let me know and I'll hook you up with, with, uh, whatever I can and help however I can. All right. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. You've been watching or listening to 7 Minute Security, a weekly podcast focused on pen testing, blue teaming, and building a career in security. For more episodes like this, visit 7ms.us. And for information about our consulting services, visit 7minsec.com.